Okay, gang, welcome to week three of new to customer success, where we'll be covering the customer success dashboard and the um, basically pipeline management, what goes with that. Last week, we covered customer segments and customer detail part two, and prior to that, stack alignment and customer detail part one. Okay, so today we're going to jump into the dashboard and just make sure that everybody knows what this is and how to make sense of it. And then some of the setup that goes into um, account management. So when we're looking at the customer success dashboard, which is your landing page, right? When you come over to customer success, it's the first thing you're going to land on. Just like when you're in VCIO, you land on the um, VCIO uh, dashboard. So we're looking at customer segments health, stack by customer. We have a total opportunity, little uh, punch out here, then stack alignment and stack by opportunity. Okay, stack opportunity by um, tag and service, I should say. So that's kind of uh, clockwise, you know, how we break this screen down. So customer segments, we went over this last week. The customer segments is basically just looking at where your customers uh, meet with effort versus value, right? So effort is up or down, the higher they are, the more effort value is left or right, farther to the right on the chart they are, the, the higher the value of their MRR. So this is basically just giving you a high level overview of where all of your customers are. And then outliers will be, we talked about this last week, but at least double the median uh, you know, cutoff of MRR. So outliers are gonna be uh, more on the high value side, okay? Um, extremely high value, all right? Um, and as we discussed within customer segments, you can actually set different um, titles or different, you know, you can call your, your segments different things. We've got A, B, C, D. You may change it so that A is down here in the, you know, bottom right-hand column because that's actually the, the best spot to be in, right? High, um, low effort, high value. Uh, and then, you know, B, C, D, something like that, right? Um, you have those options. You can do that in the customer segment section. I'm not going to click on that screen because it's going to take a while to load with all of our demo um, info. And I just want to make sure that I maximize our time on the call. So, um, so we've got customer segments. Uh, then we've got uh, customers by health and opportunities by health. So when we're looking at this little health breakout here, if I hover over the green, it's basically telling us we've got nine um, customers in the green and then, uh, you know, 37.5% of our customer base is satisfactory. Okay. Uh, if I hover over yellow, four, and then, you know, 16.7% of our customer base is in needs attention. Okay. So that's where we're at from a health standpoint. Then if we go by opportunity by health, if I hover over green, it actually tells us what the dollar value is of all of our, um, you know, healthiest customers. So over 20K worth of opportunity um, MRR out there. And then, you know, it shows you what percentage of opportunities good health makes up, right? So the green is 71.1% of all of our, um, you know, our customer base. Um, and then we have stack by customer. So this gets into the stack alignment piece where when we break this down, it actually shows you what your MRR and NRR opportunities are by customer. So if I hover over creative designs here, we can see the MRR opportunity for creative designs is just over 7K. And then it also shows you in the grayed out, uh, you know, stuff, the little grayed out check boxes, what those are. But if I hover over NRR, then it just moves over and shows us that we've got over third, almost uh, 35K worth of um, non-recurring revenue opportunity here. So that's going to be your one-offs, right? Like your installs and such. Um, and then, you know, Hogwarts, right? So uh, six and a half K in MRR opportunity and no NRR opportunity. So, um, and then we can see, you know, what the total- uh, I don't know if that fence is open on the side, but you might want to check that. Oh, sorry. We're gonna, it's okay. We're gonna meet you, Brian. <laughs> I thought Brian was chiming in. And then as it turns out, it had nothing to do with <laughs> the uh, customer success call. So, uh, 
Always so helpful, Brian. <laughs> so stack by customer, again, is just looking at MRR and NRR opportunities by customer and breaking them out that way for you, right? And uh, we can see top 10. Um, then uh, we've got this total opportunity. Um, I've covered this before, but basically what this is looking at is the total uh, dollar value of your MRR um, opportunities out there, right? So 68, uh, almost 69K. That's total opportunity. If I came up here and I wanted to filter by company and say I went to, you know, Dunder Mifflin, right? So then it's actually going to show us what our total opportunity is and then what that particular company's opportunity is. So in this case, because I'm filtering by Dunder Mifflin, it's going to show us that, you know, we've got uh, six you know, $6,440 worth of MRR opportunity out there. And then if I clear that out, we'll return back to our total opportunity, okay? Um, stack alignment. So this gets into top 10 opportunity and alignment. So this is looking at the actual stack as opposed to the, you know, graph at the top, which is looking at stack by customer. So this is telling us, you know, as I hover over uh, MFA, that we've got over 5K worth of um MRR opportunity out there, and then uh, just over a thousand in NRR opportunities. So, like the actual deployment and all of that stuff, web filtering, you know, uh, over 4K, and then the NRR opportunity there is over 2K, and so on and so forth. So, you can go through all of your actual stack products and see where you are from an MRR and NRR opportunity, and then what the percentage of alignment is for that, right? So you can get good breakdowns on all of that stuff. And then we get to the stack opportunity, okay, which is looking at um, stack by, or I should say opportunities by tag and service. So we create those tags when we're setting up stack alignment so that you have your levels of service, uh, right? Like uh, in this case, we've got basic standard premium and then we have a few others here like um, minimum requirements uh, other and ancillary so you know you can have some miscellaneous um, stack tags but these are basically going to be the types of tags you're going to be looking at right you may have like managed services level one managed services level two ho however it makes sense to you guys but it's looking at your stack from a tiered perspective what are your services and how do you break those out so, and then on the outer ring here, we're actually looking at the services. So if I hover over MFA, MFA shows, again, we've got, you know, um, five, uh, basically 5.6K worth of opportunity out there. And then what the total percentage of all opportunity is. So 24.72% of, um, you know, all of our opportunities lie in MFA. Uh, if I hover over security awareness, right, that's a smaller piece of the pie, I'm trying to, there we go. So we've got 1700 worth of opportunity out there and that makes up 7.71%. So if I hover over the actual um, service tag and say, okay, what is standard? Then it takes all of the services that um, wrap up into the standard you know, box and gives me the overall total and then the overall percentage. So you can see it grayed out all of the services that fall into the standard category. And it tells us the total is $22,711. And then that makes up 41.42% of all opportunities. Okay. Um, same thing. If I go over here to backup, so we've got uh, 5,400 worth of opportunities in backup. That makes up 34% of our premium opportunities and then almost 35%. And then if I hover over premium, it tells you what the total dollar value is, 15,632. And then that makes up 28.51% of all opportunity dollar value, okay? So all of this is just kind of high level information to give you a nice snapshot of what's going on with your customers and you know internally with your sales team and stuff you know if you're a sales manager and you just want to see what's going on with one of your account managers you can come up here and you can find them and you can say you know just show me what's going on with alex's accounts so then it's going to show us all of um, alex's customers in the customer segments and where they are with their value and uh effort and where those uh meet and then if this ever stops loading, there we go. 
then we'll get our health breakout, um, our stack by customer. And these are all of Alex's accounts down here. Okay. The total dollar, uh, total opportunity dollar value, we know that's 68,134. And then the filtered opportunity. So because we're filtering by Alex, we actually know that Alex makes up, you know, almost 90% of our overall um, opportunity. He's got 60K worth of opportunity out there. And if he's any good at his job, hopefully he'll close, you know, 50% uh, of that, right? Um, then stack alignment down here, again, it's just breaking out the um, actual uh, services uh, as according to, you know, Alex's um, accounts. And then we get the same breakout here, but now it looks, you know, uh, a lot funnier because it's actually, you know, breaking out in percentages rather than just all the products that are under standard uh, premium and so on and so forth. So these are all of the opportunities that Alex has broken out by service and then, you know, the, the service tag, standard, um, premium, ancillary and so on. So he doesn't even have any, um, well, he does, he has some basic, he's got a little firewall out here for basic. So this just kind of, uh, you know, changes the picture for you and skews it based on, you know, who you're looking at. So in this particular case, we were looking at Alex, but you could do account group and you could say, you know, show me all of our dental offices, right? And hopefully this one won't be as bad as Alex's accounts because most of the, uh, you know, companies in our demo environment are wrapped up under Alex right now. So, um, but then again, there we go. So then now we're looking at this breakout for all of our dental companies and seeing where all of our dental companies are on this chart and by health, stack by customer and so on and so forth, okay? So that's what the screen is. The screen is very high level. Uh, it's just meant to be a nice snapshot, you know, for a sales manager or if you are the account manager and you just wanna get a real quick high level overview before you jump into a meeting and discuss it. Um, this is the best place to get it because you can just get, you know, a nice little, um, you know, high level snapshot. Okay. Uh, so there's some setup involved in order to get into um, your account managers, your account groups, and so on. And that's something that we don't discuss in week one, week two. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows the basics, right? So if we go into CS account settings, you're going to go into uh, CS account permissions. And this is where you're actually going to set your account managers and your account groups. So account managers here, okay? And then this is gonna show us all of the account managers that we've created. We can you know, delete, we can update, whatever you wanna do. So if I drill into Alex, for instance, okay, I can determine whether he's a manager or not. That's basically the only option. You're just saying whether they're a manager, they're already gonna be a user, by the way. So you will only see them in this side of the house if they're already set up as a user on the VCIO side. So when you go in to create a, an account manager, you'll have a, a list of users and this will be all users that have access to the system. And then you're gonna make them an account manager and say whether they're an actual you know, manager over a team or not, save that. And then once you have your account managers set up, then you go into account groups, and this is where you determine what uh, companies fall under what groups, right? So we've created one for Alex's accounts. If I click into this, you've got your account group title. You can add a description if you want. This would be a really good place to put, you know, if it's all law offices or all banks or, you know, whatever, finance. And then you're going to actually include the companies and it's going to be the same thing. If it's a company in Lifecycle Insights, it will show up here for you so that you can pre-select it. And then um, the number, the basically the group of companies in here is going to make up your account group. And then you determine who is the account manager of this account group, right? You might have an instance where um, account managers share an account group based on company sizes and uh, maybe, you know, the vertical market that they're in or something like that. So you can actually select more than one account manager from here um, and multiple account managers can have the same account group, okay? Um, so when we look at this, you can see the account groups, what the description, if any, is for those particular accounts. 
then you'll have the companies that are wrapped up into that account group and then the account managers. And like, here's an example right here where mythical and comical is, you can see all of the companies and you can see there's actually more than one, um, you know, account manager assigned to that group. And same thing down here with uh, Nick's group, right? We can see InGen is the only company, but there's actually two account managers in there. So you have the ability to create an account group and you can sign, uh, assign multiple companies to that account group as well as multiple account managers if need be. And then, you know, put in your description what the actual uh, vertical is or whatever. Um, you can also do it, you know, the way we've done it here, where rather than putting in a description, you're actually just saying, you know, here's all of our dental offices, right? We've created an account group for dental offices, and we've wrapped up all of those companies in the dental office account group. Or you could call this, you know, Alex's accounts and then put dental offices in the description. So you have a lot of flexibility there. And then based on how you've set up your account managers and how you've set up your account groups, and it kind of goes in reverse order, you start at the bottom, work on your account managers, then create your account groups. And then company groups is basically just showing you all of your companies and which groups they fall into. And this is actually a helpful screen if you need to know what uh, you know account manager a, a specific company belongs to. And if you notice that you have companies that don't belong to account groups like this Lacuna Inc here, and then down below um, Nonsense R Us, that sounds like a really good company, by the way. Um, then you're going to see, you know, hey, these don't have an account group. We actually need to get them set up with an account manager, right? So this screen is really informative because it's going to show you what companies belong to what account managers, and then you can catch. Um, you know, the ones that are slipping between the cracks that don't have account managers assigned. So you can get those done. So it goes account managers first, set them up. And remember, they have to have access to Lifecycle Insights or else you won't see them as an option to make an account manager. Then account groups is just attaching companies to an account manager, creating whatever account group you want, and then putting a description if you want to do that. And then company groups is simply telling you what companies belong to what account managers if they do it all, okay? Um, this one's kind of a, a tough one because there's not much more to go into other than that coming off of week one and week two. So if you guys have questions, we can go ahead and just jump into those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got that, Brian. Sorry, <laughs> I just saw your message. Um, so uh, if you guys have questions regarding, you know, customer segments, um, stack alignment, whatever, anything related to this or, you know, just customer success in general, please fire away. Nobody's got anything. I feel pretty good. Okay. Awesome. Um, a lot better than you were like this time last month, Owen, right? <laughs> yeah i mean I, I understood it this time last month but Good. i just didn't have that foundation of Good. like what the hell is all this information but yeah, yeah the yeah. pieces are okay. falling into place pretty quickly good awesome that's great um so then next week we'll be covering um the insights report and you know how that ties into the business review side of um the vcio package and all of that so um if you guys don't have anything else you know I'll give you back your uh, last 35 minutes. Am I doing that time? Time? Yeah, almost 36 minutes so that you guys can um, go back to work, take a nap, whatever you want to do. Thanks, Katie. All right. Thanks so much, guys. I'll hang out for a few more minutes. So have a great day. You too.